Hello, I'm Greg Pollock, and you're watching the 19th episode of the Scaling Rails screencast series, sponsored by New Relic. This is the first part of three episodes entitled, On the Edge. Let me explain that title for a moment. You see, a few weeks back, I started doing the Ruby 5 podcast, where twice a week we go over the latest Ruby and Rails news and libraries in the community. And doing this podcast, I started to realize there was a few new libraries that really do help you scale your Rails application. So we're going to take a look at a few of those libraries in three different casts. Starting with Active Record Libraries for Database Optimization, looking at the Bullet Library, Rails Indexes, and Scrooge. So let's get going. First up, we're going to be taking a look at Bullet by Richard Huang, which helps you reduce the number of active record queries in your application by giving you alerts and sometimes even growl notifications. So let's take a look at a screencast. So here we have a typical post controller, and there's our index action where we're pulling all of the posts from our database. In the index.html.erb, we're going to iterate through each of the posts. We're going to print out the post title, and we're going to print out the post.user.name. So this is the author of each of the posts. Now we're going to start up our server. And if we go to our server, oh, hey, look, we got a growl notification from Bullet that says N plus one query detected. Add to your finder, include user. OK, so it's recommending we use include. If we take a look in our logs, we can see that it even tells us what line of code triggered that notification, which was line 13. Sure enough, line 13 is where we do post.user.name. So if we go back to our controller at this point and add the include option to our query, and go back to our server, we can see that, hey, now it's not showing us that growl notification. Pretty cool. Now what's really neat about Bullet is that it works both ways. If I remove that line of code from my HTML, and refresh, oh, we get another bullet notification saying that we've got unused eager loading. So we might want to remove that include um, to optimize our action. Another really cool feature of bullet is that it also works for counter columns. So if I want to list out how many comments we have for each post, I might do post.comment.size, and that's going to cause three queries which isn't good, and Bolt's going to realize that and say, oh, you might want to implement a counter cache here, so I don't do a count query for each post. So that's Bullet, helping you reduce your queries by giving you these notifications. And don't worry if you don't have Growl installed, by default, it's going to give you JavaScript alerts when it detects these problems with your code. Now it's time for a pop quiz. I'm going to show you a migration, and you tell me what's missing. As some of you probably realized, what's missing here is the index for the foreign key. Rails developers aren't the best at remembering indexes. Not just indexes because of this foreign key here, but if, say, somewhere in our code we search for posts based on title, well, we also want an index on the title. If you have a Rails application that you think might be missing indexes, you might want to check out Rails Indexes by Elad Miter. Rails indexes basically gives you two different rig tasks which will help you find missing indexes in your application. So let's go ahead and take a look. We're first going to install the plugin, and then we're going to run the first rig task. What this rig task is going to do is it's going to go look at all of our models, the relationship between our models, and based on that information, it's going to look into our database to see if we're missing any indexes, and it's going to generate a migration for us. Now, as I mentioned earlier, what if we have some code where we're actually finding, say, a post by title? We're basically having the find method dictate what indexes we need. Well, that's what the second rake task is for. This rake task is going to look through our entire application for places that we have that find method. Based on that, it's going to recommend some indexes, which we may or may not need. Obviously, we don't need the ID there, but we might need the title. To show you how advanced this is, I'm going to go ahead and go back into the code, and I'm going to add um, find by title and published. So we're going to add one more condition there. If I go ahead and run the rake task again, 
we can see that it properly gives me a complex foreign key. So that's Rails indexes, two rake tasks to help you figure out where you might be missing indexes in your Rails application. Lastly, we're going to be taking a look at Scrooge, which is a SQL query optimizer. And before I show you what it does, let me show you why we need it. Let's consider a table in our database called posts with these columns. If I do post.all and look at my log, I'm going to see that it runs this query, select star from posts. But what if in my view, I'm not even accessing the body from this table? Well, that means it's casting a bunch of strings from our database that it doesn't need to be casting. So optimally here, what we would want is to do a query that looks something more like this. And sure, we could add the select option to all of our find statements everywhere, but you know, that just feels like it's going to cause some, you know, code bloat. It's just going to, you know, cause a lot of extra code. Luckily, this is where Scrooge comes in. Allow me to illustrate. So here's our controller and our index action. And we haven't installed the plugin yet, um, so let's take a look at just the base action without the plugin. So if we take a look at the logs, we can see that in this action we're doing select star from posts, but there's no place in this view that we're actually printing out the body of the post, so that's not optimized. So let's go ahead and install the Scrooge plugin. and start up our server. And the first time we refresh this page, if we take a look down in the log, we're going to see that Scrooge is doing something. What it's doing here is it's discovering which columns from each table we're using in this particular view. Because the next time we refresh the page, it's only going to query for the columns that it needs. So as you can see down here, it's not querying for the body of the post anymore. Pretty neat. Now this also works with relationships, with using, you know, includes for eager loading. So here we're going to also include all of the users for that post. So here we can find out the author by doing post.user.name through the relationship. And now if we go back to the browser, do a refresh, we can see now that the first time this gets run, Scrooge is learning and the second time it gets run, we can now see that Scrooge is only querying for the data that we need from the users table, which in this case is just the name. So the Scrooge plugin optimizes your SQL queries without you having to change a line of code. And we've reached the end of this first screencast where we took a look at Bullet, Rails Indexes, and Scrooge. In the next screencast, we're going to be taking a look at Rails libraries to prevent memory bloat, and namely uh, Rackbug, Memory Logic, and Oink. So I hope you stick around for that. And mind you, all these libraries that I'm showing you are not a replacement for New Relic RPM. If you installed Scrooge in production, uh, New Relic RPM would be a great tool to look at a week later so you can compare you know, the previous week's results to this week's results and see how much you know, it, Scrooge managed to speed up your Rails application. Hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching.